All right, fellow YouTubers, in this video, I'm going to go over why I don't actually track uh, too heavily my current account values and my investments, but I'm tracking how much I'm putting in to my investment accounts and how much the dividend payments are. Um, one of the main reasons is the account value could easily fluctuate up and down depending on the market, but the two things that I can control in my life are how much I contribute and how much the dividends are. It's a lovely picture of my daughter, because why not? All right, when I'm looking at investment accounts, I'm gonna make a quick X Y axis. Of course, I can't draw very well today. Um, on the X axis, I'm gonna be looking at time. And on the Y axis, I'm gonna be looking at two things. One, either dividends, I'll do that in blue. Or let's look at the contributions. Cut for contributions in, yellow, in orange. Now, my contributions over time are probably going to be pretty steadily, if not slightly, increasing as I get paid bigger salaries, as we're able to make a bigger difference between what we bring in and what we spend. Contributions are definitely something that hopefully will increase over time. And along with that, in blue, the dividends should also be increasing over time. And hopefully they'll be more of a curve shape as dividend companies grow, as I contribute into these companies, and as the time period expands as well. Okay. Now, my account values, that has to do with the actual amount based on the total number of shares I own multiplied by the actual share price that will be in this color and that might easily fluctuate quite a bit ideally the trend is upwards as I increase my contributions and as those dividends are increasing I'm buying more shares of these different ETFs the account value should increase but stock market is very volatile you might go 10 years, like from the year 2000 to 2009, where the S&P 500 actually lost a little bit of money. Um, so again, over long periods of time, you don't really know where the total account value will be. Okay. If you have, say, $50,000, we'll map here. Let's say I have $50,000 and I lose 10%. That would be 0.1. I'd be down $5,000. Unfortunately, I cannot invest $5,000 immediately in most cases. So the stock market could easily fall 10% within a matter of weeks or months, possibly. Um, the stock market actually went down almost 20% in December of last year. Now, obviously, account values could increase. Let's say I have $50,000. It goes up 8% in a few months. And I'm being a lazy cow's potato. I'm not putting in any money. Oh, that's 80%. It would be $4,000 of gains that I would make just from the account values growing, right? The only few things that I can control are my contributions and up to a point my dividend payments. So I'm just going to make a quick Google Doc here. When you're looking at things that you can control. That's pretty much the only things that you can do with your investments. One is the contributions you make to the dividends that come in, right? Now, the contributions you make, one of the keys to wealth is you take your income that's coming in, whether it's a paycheck, job you have, dividend income, any type of money coming in, instead of that, you're going to subtract your expenses, and that will equal how to get rich or your net worth over time, right? If you make a, let's say you make $200,000 a year, but you have huge mortgages and car payments, and your total expenses are $180,000 a year, your net worth only increased $20,000 a year with things that you could control. Again, we don't know where the money's going in terms of stock market growth, dividends, or whatnot. Just the actual contributions you make 
would be this difference. What if on the other hand, you live, you make 60,000 a year, but you only live on $30,000. Suddenly you could save $30,000. That's the difference of the two. And the, un, the amount of contributions you make would actually increase compared to the first situation, right? I don't want to necessarily track too much on things that I cannot control. I cannot control if the stock market goes down 10% randomly or 20%. I also can't control when the stock market increases 10 or 20%. But the contributions I make hopefully will increase the dividends. The dividends is part of the income that ideally, again, is money coming in that will be pretty significant over a long period of time. So I want to be able to make sure that my dividends are increasing month after month. Every ETF and uh, companies that I own pretty much keep their dividends either stable or increase over time. If I ever see a company where the ETF, where the dividends decrease, I usually consider selling it at that point because I want to be increasing my income part, right? So that's why every month, ideally, I'm going up about a dollar or two a month in total dividends. You know, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but over long periods of time, those dividends will increase very much. So as I do my monthly retirement videos and monthly dividend videos, the main reasons I'm just looking at how much I put in and how much dividends come in. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.